What's going on guys? Welcome back to Raider World. So in this episode on the Eldorado Project, we have the Hogwarts Lower Vented Fairings. For Harley Touring models, these lower vented fairings are constructed of OEM grade, impact resistant, ABS plastic. Available in a variety of color match finishes, these lowers are designed with a convenient, easy to access storage compartment and include all the necessary mounting hardware. And if you're looking to add lower fairing speakers, Hogworks also carries speaker pods that you can easily swap out to accommodate any standard six and a half inch speakers. Wind, rain, or snow, these lower fairings provide the ultimate protection and comfort for the long haul. All right, so welcome back to another episode on the Eldorado Project. Uh, if you guys have been following along with this project, you already know what's going on behind me. If you haven't, make sure you go back to the previous videos and catch up to where we're at now. So we have the Hogworks lower vented fairings. I'm excited to put these on. It's pretty much going to complete the front end of the bike here. Now, obviously, there's different things you can do on the front, but for me, these lower vented fairings are going to work. I also have a stereo system coming in from Volunteer Audio. Jay over at Volunteer Audio is sending me out this amazing stereo system. I can't wait to get it here and get it installed. That's why I want the lower vented fairings as well, because Hogworks does offer those speaker pods that we can switch these out and get those speakers in. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm ready to get these on. I'll show you what's in the box. I'll get one assembled and then we'll put them on the bike. Let's go. All right, so for tools, I use a pair of needle nose pliers, Phillips head screwdriver, a pass-through socket head driver, a pass-through ratchet, a regular ratchet, a 10 millimeter pass-through socket, a 13 millimeter pass-through socket, a four millimeter hex bit, and a five millimeter hex bit. So here you have your left and right fairing bodies. Then you have your fairing caps. This was gonna cap over your engine guard. So it covers that up. Your engine guard runs along that channel there. Now a lot of times these are hard to get to align. Uh, that's gonna be with any lower vented fairings, just getting them aligned on the engine guard. You just wanna make sure you're taking your time. You're not scratching these up or damaging the body in any type of way. Just take your time getting them lined up. You wanna force anything. It all fits. You just gotta find that sweet spot. Here you have all your mounting hardware. I'll show you exactly what goes to what once we start assembling it. Uh, sometimes for these, you do have to press them down a little bit to get them to sit snug, but you can easily just clamp them down with your fingers to get them to fit snug. So these are the clamps that go around your crash bar or your engine guard. So to assemble the vent to the glove box insert, you have your long screw, you have a small washer, then you have your two serrated washers, this is what helps open and close it and to keep it closed. You have your bushing, your larger washer, and then your lock nut. Then you have this post to keep your vent aligned and in place. So here you have your glove box insert. This is your glove box opening. You have this cap that sits on here just like that. It's your glove box door. You have these little inserts that go into here and these will snap on to here to keep this closed. And then you have your vent right here. I'll show you exactly how this works. So to install the vent to the glove box insert, I'll do this after I install the glove box insert to the glove box door. So you have your long screw with smaller washer. You're gonna take this, slide that through your vent then you're gonna have your two serrated washers. Obviously you want teeth to teeth. You have this little square that's gonna sit inside the square here. Then you have your other serrated washer that's gonna sit on here. Same thing, you have a squared side here that's gonna sit inside that square there. Obviously you want your post aligned along that channel. You wanna make sure that that square is seated properly. Then you'll take your bushing, you'll slide that on. Then you have your larger washer, you'll slide that on. And then you have your lock nut. And that's how you operate your vent. Now when you go to tighten this down, you don't want to tighten it down too much. 
where you can't even move it. You want to tighten it down just enough where you can feel it click and it locks into place. So I'll go ahead and remove this because I'm going to install the glove box insert to the glove box opening because it's going to make it a little easier to access the screws to mount it on. So first thing I'll do is install the glove box insert to the glove box opening. It's just going to make it a little easier to access this screw here because once you install that vent, it just makes it a little difficult to access the screw that's down here. If you look at your glove box insert, you have these four holes right here. Those are going to line up with these four posts right here. So you have these two screws. They're going to thread in through these posts right here. Now these are self-tapping screws, so I'll make sure I'll get these down nice and straight. Now you don't need to over tighten these, just get them down until it stops. So now I'll assemble the vent. These openings right here are going to go towards this edge. I'll take my screw with washer. I'll put that in. I'll take one of the serrated washers. Just want to make sure that square is sitting inside this square. I'll take my other serrated washer, stick that on with the square side up. You want teeth to teeth. I'll go ahead and stick this through. You want to make sure that this post is inside the channel. You just want to make sure that everything is sitting in there nice and flush. And then I'll get the bushing, the other washer, and the lock nut on. So to tighten this down, the screw is a four millimeter hex bit and the nut is a 10 millimeter socket. So you don't want to tighten this down too much. You just want to tighten it down just enough to where you hear those audible clicks and it stays in place. So you have your glove box door keepers. You're just gonna stick these in. It has a Christmas tree type retention clips. You're gonna push that into here. It'll sit on there just like that. You have two holes right here. Obviously you wanna line that up with the correct hole, which is gonna be this top one right here. And basically your glove box door is going to snap on to these right here. Pretty secure on there. I wouldn't worry too much about these flying off. So here you have your finished assembly. I'll go ahead and mount this on to the fairing body. So here you have your fairing body. You'll take your finished assembly. You'll set it on here. It only goes on one way. You'll flip it over and you have your three mounting locations right here. So these screws don't magnetize if you have a magnetized screwdriver. So it is hard to align to the holes. So I just take a pair of needle nose pliers and I'll start that first thread and then I'll tighten them down. So I'll get all of these lined up first before I tighten them all the way down. So same thing with these screws, just get them down nice and snug. You don't want to over tighten or strip them out. So here you have the fairing cap. You have these fairing clips. Like I said before, if they slide on too easy or they come off too easily, press them down with your fingers and then it'll fit nice and snug. So it'll sit in here just like this. And for these fairing clips, you have these two nuts that secure it down. So with these fairing clips, you might have to adjust them up or down to get it to line up with these two holes right here. You'll slide this over your engine guard and you should see them pop through on the other side. Right there. Here you have the clamp assembly for the bottom. You have your clamp with a rubber jacket on the outside just protects the paint on the fairing and also the engine guard. Then you have a rubber gasket, just helps with dampening the vibration and also helps protect the paint on your fairing. So what I'll do first, obviously I'll run this over the engine guard. I'll take my screw, 
I'll run that through to the other side. I'll take my rubber washer, I'll put this on before I take the backing off. I'll run it under the fairing and then I'll secure it with my nut. All right, so now it's time to get these mounted on. Like I said, it's gonna take some patience and finesse to get these to line up just right. Just make sure you're taking your time. You don't wanna scratch up that beautiful paint. Now we'll be covering up the brake arm and the brake pedal as well as the front fender because I don't wanna scratch anything on those. Now, if you do have highway pegs, I do suggest you take those off. You can always remount them back on once you get everything else on. Other than that, guys, let's get them on. So you'll take this bottom part of the fairing body and you'll guide that around the brake arm and brake pedal. Now I'll just take my fairing cap, making sure these screws are lining up with the holes on the inside. Sometimes you need to adjust these fairing clips just a little bit to get it to line up. I'll get the nuts in here started and then I'll get this bottom clamp on. So here I'm using a screwdriver body with an extension and a 10 millimeter socket. You want something that's able to pass through all the way because you will have that long bearing clip screw. So here I have it loose so I can adjust that bottom clamp as well. So I'll take the clamp, I'll open it up a little bit so it clears the engine guard or a crash guard. Close it down on here. So I have my screw with my rubber washer. I still have the 3M backing tape on there. I'll run my screw through. Take my rubber washer, stick that in. I'll go ahead and take this backing off. Now that I know everything lines up, I'll stick this through. I'll take my nut and get it started. So to secure the screw and the nut to the bracket, the screw is a five millimeter hex bit and the nut is a 13 millimeter socket. Just make sure you tighten down everything evenly. So I have everything lined up, everything looks good. Now if you do have a chin spoiler, you just wanna make sure you're not making contact with that. You wanna have a little bit of space between your chin spoiler and your lower fairing. Now when you're tightening this down, you don't wanna over tighten because you could possibly crack the plastic. Just make sure everything is lined up properly. You don't have any major gaps on the bottom or the top. And it's gonna be the exact same thing for the left side. All right, that wraps it up for this episode on the El Dorado project. This was the Hogworks lower vented fairings. Pretty simple install. Like I said, make sure you're taking your time when you're getting these on here, getting everything aligned and tightened down with those screws and nuts. You don't want to over tighten because you might possibly crack your plastic. You don't want to ruin this beautiful paint. I can't wait to get the speaker pods on here along with the speaker system from Volunteer Audio. That's going to be a fun project, a good episode that you don't want to miss. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, hit that bell button for future videos, and I'll see you on the next one.